Hello everyone, and let's play some more Alundra. Here in Lars's Crypt, here rests Alundra? But that's us. Oh god, zombies! Zombies are, uh, very, very annoying enemies. And I'm going to completely, completely miss with that pot. These guys, however, aren't as threatening. There's another zombie over here, though. Alright, got him. Touch the shiny spot, and it magically forms a bridge! Alright. So yeah, I don't know what was up with the whole here rests Alundra thing, I guess. I don't know. I don't trust this Lars guy. I don't like his crypt. Seems very dangerous. Born in the east, in the west, below, and glares up. That's important information. Also, left is left and right is right. I know it's that's a difficult concept that takes a while to learn, but it's referring to this puzzle. Lever on the left points to the left, lever on the right points to the right. Then you can jump on the platform and it will go up. Pretty simple stuff. And now we have platforms here, alright. And once we press this switch, things blow up! Yes! Yes, I love switches that make things blow up. Those just say the same thing. We can also unlock that area. There's absolutely no reason at all to do that. I don't know why they even have that in the game, but we can unlock that area for no reason. So I did! Okay. This is the puzzle talking about east and west and down and up. And hey, who are you? He is going to test the very limit of our existence. That's great. That's great. He sounds friendly. I don't really want to know the limits of my existence. What have we got here? Oh no, we're trapped. And we're in a room full of enemies. The blue blobs are not any more difficult than the purple blobs. Only difference is they have projectiles. Which, um, uh, if you hit them fast enough, they never get the chance to use it. Gonna try to use the pots on the zombies, since they take a billion hits with our stupid little dagger. Oh no, I missed him. That's not good. See if I can make up for that. Yay, okay, I got him. I'll finish off these blue blobs. As you can probably tell, the staircase is blocked off over there with the giant block! There we go. Once we kill all of the enemies in that room, we can finally go through. And in here, there are now giant holes in the ground. And you need to be careful around the edges of those holes, because they will, uh, kind of suck you down in. Press those hidden switches, and we get a key. Dent, enter, open. Really, that's all we need to know. That is all we need to know, those three words. Unlock that with the key. And this puzzle is uh, pretty simple. There are three holes, and we want to cover up the dead ones. Have water. Water is where the life is kept in the world. Cover up that hole too. Now once we step on this platform, wait a while, and it finally starts moving. And we really want to stay to the right, because yeah, as you can see, giant spike ball, that's something we want to avoid. Getting impaled is not something you want in a Lundra. It's actually very damaging, but we definitely want this barrel. Barrel is not like the spike ball at all. Barrel is a good thing. Spike ball is bad. Barrel good, spike ball bad. Remember this, viewer. There will be a test. But once we have the barrel, we can jump up here and talk to the statue. Talking to statues is also good.
Because, see, things like that happen when you talk to statues. And they will also heal your health if you need it, but I don't. Now what we're gonna do is jump in a hole! Intentionally. Intentionally jumping in holes. That is what is up next. You may be wondering, why did I just intentionally jump in a hole? Well, obviously, there is a reason, viewer. I don't do things without reason. There's something we want down here. Something very important. And we need these rocks to jump upon. Even though we can never really seem to throw that rock at the right distance. We want what is in that chest. You can probably guess what I'd actually go out of my way for to get. And I really, really need to remember to jump. That's, it's vital to jump in this game. Inside we've got a Gilded Falcon. That is, I believe, number nine. We're moving right along with collecting Gilded Falcons, but there are 50 in the game, so we don't even have half yet. And we have to kill all the enemies in the room if we want to get out of here. And we do want to get out of here. Spending our life down there will not stop Melzus. And it won't do anything, really. It'll just waste a whole lot of time. Again, you gotta be careful around these holes. It will kind of slide you into the edge. You can kind of see there. Don't want to show it off too much, because I don't want to go down in that pit. So once you're standing on those things, you can't actually control your movement in any way, shape, or form. But you can see, hey, there's a dent in here. So let's enter. And let's talk to a sign. And we've opened a door and it also gave us some good advice. And no, platform, platform, no. Gonna throw bombs into the hole, no. Platform, come back, I miss you. Yay, platform. Yay, platform. I'm gonna throw bombs around some more because it's fun. Okay. Well, let's continue on now. Fair enough. Don't really know what that means. But now we've got a puzzle here. As you can see, when we hit that one, it immediately inactivates. So what we'd have to do is hit them in the right order, because each one we hit has a different length of time that it will stay lit up. And the one in the middle is the shortest one, so we want to hit that last. So we've taken one step forward. That's important to note. We also missed that blob with the uh, pie. Let us try not to repeat that. Good. So now we want to take a step backward. And we have to do this puzzle again. It's a simple puzzle though, so nothing to worry about. And again, we took one step forward, we gotta take two steps back, and then we have to um, come together, because opposites attract. Actually, no, that, that's not what we have to do at all. Now we want to take another step forward. And we're at a new location. What have we got here? Hi, Lars. Wait. Why? How? Uh-oh. It's time for our next boss fight, the Stone Guardian. It can be pretty dangerous, and um, if you can time it correctly to use bombs, it can be pretty useful, but I tend to like just using the sword. As you can see, the Stone Guardian's main form of attack is just walking around and causing rocks to fall from the ceiling. The rocks do have a, a type of pattern. They have various patterns, but... Hitting the, the Stone Guardian before he can make them fall is really your best shot. To do that, you really gotta stay on top of him and... Like, once his invulnerability wears off, you really need to be hitting him right away for that to happen. And even then... But as you can see, he's uh, really not too difficult. Bombs do more damage on him, but 
it's kind of unpredictable to uh, toss a bomb where he's going to be, unless I guess you hold it in your hands until it's about ready to blow up. Oh god. Not really in bad shape, I have enough herbs to heal up if I need to, but I shouldn't need to. The Stone Guardian is not too difficult, as long as you don't just stand around and wait for him to run into you. And we've got him! Just like that, the Stone Guardian is dead. And we are victorious! Next time on Alundra, we head through that door to the right, and we talk to Lars. I'll see you then.